Hello chess lovers, Sulem here and in this video I want to share with you another very interesting attacking game played by renowned Soviet chess player Rashid Nezhmetdinov. His opponent is 10-time Armenian chess champion and eminent chess composer Henrik Kasparian. The game was played in 1955 in Riga at Spartak Team Championship. In this game Nezhmetdinov had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Kasparian responded with Karokan defense. Knight f3 d5, knight c3 we see two knights attack, bishop g4 h3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, e6 g3, g6. Looks like that Kasparian is making a novelty. Usually in here Black is either playing knight f6 or knight d7 but Kasparian decided to go for the fianchetto of the kingside bishop. Bishop g2, bishop g7, white castled kingside, knight d7, queen e2, white wants to go for f4 advance and d4. Black is harassing white knight forcing it to move but uh, leaving the tension in the center and proceeding with the development is better. Instead we see d4, knight b1, e5, d3, knight e7, and there it goes, f4. This is an idea which can be seen very often when playing two knights attack, queen c7, a4, and Kasparian castled kingside, which looks like to be a dubious move. Instead it was better to meet white's aggression with f5. But instead to a4 we see castling kingside and f5. Kasparian played somewhat passively and this f5 advance now will allow white to create a nice attack. And as you know allowing Nezhmetdinov to attack is simply suicidal. Knight d2, bishop h6, king h2, king h8. Both players are making prophylactic moves with their kings but at this point uh, for black it's better to put the king on g7, maintaining the possibility of putting the rook on h8. Instead we see king h8, f takes g6, h takes g6, knight f3, after which the exchange of dark squared bishops on c1 followed. Knight c5, c3, knight b3, rook d1, rook d8, knight h4, queen c8. This is the start of a dubious queen maneuver, which leads to nowhere. Instead, putting the king on g7, in some cases uh, preparing rook h8, and then c5, queen b6 is a better idea. According to Stockfish, leaving the queen on the queen side is better, and yeah, from the 6th rank the queen can be also very useful when organizing the defense, but instead we see queen c8, bishop f3, queen e6, bishop g4. While black was busy with maneuvering with his queen, Nezhmetdinov brought his bishop on a very active attacking diagonal, queen f7, knight f3, queen g8. Well, instead of playing queen f7 it was better to move back the queen on g8 straight away and we can see that Kasparian is losing a precious tempo. Right now knight g5 is the threat that's why Kasparian moved his queen once again and h4 white is proceeding with the attack. King g7, rook f2, although going for h5 is also playable but in the game we first see rook f2, rook d6. Well at this point playing c5 and then c4 is a better idea. Let's take a quick look at this line starting with c5. And if move like h5 then c4 and if d takes c4 then d3. And all this because of this rich knight c1 resource in case you capture on d3. Uh, but instead to rook f2 we see very cautious rook d6 answer, rook f1, rook d8. Black is waiting and meanwhile Nezhmetdinov is making his position stronger. b6, h5, c5, h takes g6, d takes c3, b takes c3, c4 and d4. This is the start of a very impressive combination by Nezhmetdinov. Of course allowing white to open up the position and create an attack was not a good idea by black. He takes d4, c takes d4, so we see a pawn sacrifice, right? And after rook takes d4, white went for e5. White's main goal is to open up this f-file and target black king. 
Blake was not hurrying with capturing on g6 and that's normal, the pawn belongs black but it requires a huge accuracy from black side to organize this defense, something which we will now see that uh, Kasparian will fail to do. f5, bishop takes f5, queen d5. So finally black is activating his queen which was stuck on g8 really very awkwardly but already there are too many problems to solve in black's camp. Bishop e6, Nezhmedino finds a very beautiful move hitting both on d5 and also on f8. And now if you go for rook takes f2 then white will recapture with the queen and if queen takes e6 then queen f8 check is coming followed by rook f6, white is winning. In our game to bishop e6 black answered with rook h8 check and bishop h3 and now white has the total control over the f-file, knight takes g6. So far so good despite the fact that black was playing with inaccuracies Black was holding, but after knight takes g6, black's position collapses quickly. At this point, it was better to play rook d3 and block this diagonal. This is actually the only move which allows black to keep the balance. If rook f7 check, then king g8. And if you keep on announcing checks, then king takes g6. And yes, there is no check made. The computer gives total equality. And by the way, as you may have already guessed, at this point after king g8, rook takes e7 is not good because of this rook d2 check. But Kasparian missed his chance and instead of playing rook d3 played knight takes g6. And now let's see how Nezhmet Dino finished up his opponent. Here we have rook f7 check. And after king h6, Nezhmet Dinov made the move and forced a resignation. Can you find the winning move for white? Ready? The winning move is queen takes g6. A brilliant queen sacrifice to force a resignation. Black resigned because already black king is in a mating net. Let's take a quick look how white can check made black king. If king g6, then rook f6 check, and then rook h5 check, yeah, it's just no way out, you know. The exposed black king has no chance of surviving, and then once you're blocking the h-file, this bishop jumps into the game, and we have a checkmate on the board. That's why, as I've already mentioned, after this beautiful queen sacrifice, Kasparian resigned. Kasparian made several mistakes in this game, first allowing f5 was not good, then putting the queen on that passive g8 square turned out to have very negative effects on the game. And yes, all in all looks like that Kasparian didn't have a definite strategic plan and with a steady pressure Nezhmet Dino finally managed to win the game. In the end a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. In the end feel free to check out my early uploads as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.